Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and today we're taking a look at the upcoming crowdfunding campaigns for the month of May. Now, as usual, before we dive into these, let's start with the fact that you should go ahead and subscribe to Shelf Clutter in case you want these notifications on a more regular weekly basis. Shelf Clutter, Adam at Shelf Clutter over here, he regularly covers upcoming crowdfunding campaigns, and he covers them from the stance of what's coming up this week, which means if you want to know all the things that I didn't cover because I don't want to cover 45 different campaigns in a single video, well, he'll have those. If you want to know the changes, the updates, the things that got pushed off, the things that moved around, and the inevitable amount of campaigns that are going to show up throughout the course of the month that I will not know about, at least as of this point in the month, well, make sure to subscribe to Shelf Clutter over there. He has weekly videos going up every single Sunday, clips in case you want to just go ahead and see whatever you need to do there, whatever you need to see there. Adam has you covered, and he'll have more information on a raw, regular basis than I will, and that's why you should subscribe to Shelf Clutter with the link down below. Past that, before we dive into the campaigns, let's start off with our sponsor of the week. Our sponsor segment over here is Level Up Events. Well, sort of sponsored segment. This is really the convention that I'll be hosting in... Um, July 14th through 16th in Connecticut. You can go ahead and check that out. There'll be a bunch of, you know, de details, information on the site. I'll have a link down below. You can go ahead and, you know, come join us as we play games with myself. A bunch of other special guests will be here as well. Let's go ahead and see if we can find, you know, a variety of special guests. We're going to have play to wins. We're going to have a hot games room. We're going to have an absolute ton of things to keep you busy and interested as you play through this. You can go ahead and, you know, find your own lodging or you can stay inside the hotel itself so you can be, you know, just jump downstairs whenever you want and join us for whatever game is currently going on at any point. Uh, July 14th to 16th, make sure to check that out. Level up retreat happening this year. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the first campaigns of the week, starting off with, not week, the month, the month that is. Clank Legacy is going to be launching on May 2nd, I believe. Clank Legacy 2 specifically, Darkest Magic. This is the follow-up to the original Clank Legacy, a game that has more than broken the top 100. And I believe this is I believe this is the first one on Kickstarter. I think the original one was not on crowdfunding. This is going to be Clank Legacy diving you back into the epic sequel uh, of cooperative and a co-op and competitive play in the world of Penny Arcade, Arcade's Acquisitions, Inc. This is just more Clank Legacy. If you didn't like Clank Legacy, I don't know if this will change your mind. And if you did like Clank Legacy, I imagine you are one of the 7,840 people currently following the campaign. Then we have over here, we have Wishland Dreams from America. This is going to be a third edition of Wishlands as well as a Dreams from America expansion. This is Wishland, which is a uh, theme park amusement, a theme park themed game of building out your amusement park with a worker placement mechanism across seven rounds of play, four actions per round, as you place workers down, as you take actions to pull your workers back, as you try to be mindful of the various cards you're building up, all trying to get as many points as possible across the variety of ways you're going to get points in this game. This is Wishland, and this again, third edition, as well as an expansion, coming May 2nd to Kickstarter. Then we have the Hunters AD 1492, another May 2nd campaign. This is going to be over on GameFound, and this is a spiritual successor or a sequel or whatnot, not really a sequel, I call it a spiritual successor, to the Hunters AD, which I believe the one I currently have is a 2114. That's the original game. They had an original game. They had a cleanup 2114 edition, and then they have the Hunters AD, which is bringing you that system to a degree, but in more of a medieval landscape. It's going to be launching on GameFound. We have 6,500 people following the campaign. A ton of content you can check out already to see if this is a game system for you. This is going to be giving you a giant, epic, big box campaign experience with a leg. Like, it's just a campaign. It's a campaign as you try to figure out how to take down the various baddies, how to survive across the variety of encounters in a story driven campaign. There'll be hundreds, not hundreds, I don't know, I said hundreds, uh, 40 plus hours of play or whatnot in uh, the Hunter's AD, launching on GameFound uh, May 2nd. And we have Sky to Your Horde Monoliths again launching. I think this actually got pushed off of it. I think this was a May 2nd campaign, and I believe it got pushed off to May 9th, if I'm not mistaken, so it might be a bit out of order over here. But Sky to Your Horde is bringing you the solo slash cooperative slash competitive. There are multiple different ways you can play this experience. Uh, the game in which you're going to be trying to, uh, kind of in a, in a, um, what's it called? Uh, oh my gosh, what's the name? That's the game system. I actually say it somewhere here. Hearthstone. In a Hearthstone style, uh, Hearthstone style gameplay, as you take down the various baddies, as you try to take down the monsters' portals before they take down your castle gate, and you're trying to figure out how to, uh, again, either solo or cooperatively work your way against the baddies, this is going to introduce more combinations, more decks, and a new box. If you back the original campaign, you know that some people had uh, complaints about the box quality and all that. They are addressing that by giving you more content and a larger box to fit it all in. Hopefully better quality over there, but this is going to be... It's a great system. I really enjoy this one. I should have gameplay of this one coming up soon. I do want to dive into this, uh, the full gameplay experience. So I'm hoping to have a film gameplay over on the channel. I've already, I've already reviewed it a while ago. You can check out that review. And I don't think my opinion has changed significantly, which I mean, in a good way. I mean, I, I've continued to play this one since it's arrived and I've continued to enjoy it. So hopefully you'll be able to check that one out. That is Sky Tier Horde uh, coming to you May 9th, I think, possibly. 
Then we have Cities of Venus from Tin Robot Games. It's going to be a worker placement game as you players establish floating cities in the clouds of Venus before contact is lost with Earth. Uh, this is a medium weight euro. I don't have a ton of information on this game, but Cities of Venus launching on Kickstarter, I believe, May 2nd as well. We have Gold Nugget, another game found campaign. I think this is a May 2nd one. It may have been pushed off as well and not entirely certain. Coming to you from uh, Two Tomatoes Games, Gold Nugget is a, uh, a kind of... I don't know if it's a hidden roll game. You're trying to basically gather this gold nugget. So there's going to be a single a single stone amongst all these hidden up stones, which is going to be the gold nugget. And then through utilizing your abilities, as far as all these animals having different cards, playing your cards, trying to gather the gold nugget, trying to track who has the gold nugget, and possibly take it from them if necessary while utilizing your various abilities and the cards you have in the game, while having a degree of like players closing their eyes as you go through the game while taking different rocks, uh, trying to be mindful of whether you actually have the things or not, and possibly having consequences as well. Lots of just powers and abilities and and gathering different rocks and what until you can eventually find out who is the player left standing with the gold nugget at the end of play. Then we have Leviathan Wilds. This is going to be a relaunch campaign coming May 9th, I believe, on Kickstarter. This is a relaunch campaign for the original Leviathan Wilds, which basically is a solo and cooperative experience of trying to climb these client, just the, trying to climb these giant leviathans in the game. Going through a, a bit of a storybook as you flip through different leviathans, jumping around and trying to basically crash these crystals off their backs, while being mindful of the fact that they are constantly executing different attacks that are going to shatter the the very ground you're standing on and possibly have you tumbling to the ground. You have to manage your economy, manage your decks, and ultimately try to stay alive in this game as you help rescue these Levi these leviathans, uh, and build up your decks as well. This is going to kind of a bit of a campaign experience to this as you power up and level up across the scenarios. That's Leviathan Wilds coming to Kickstarter. We have, uh, this is uh, the Great Rat Wars. The Great Rat, War Rat Wars, which I believe is another May 9th campaign. This is a one versus many asymmetrical tactical skirmish game as players take on the roles of characters and on these rat generals as you try to wander around the map. Do we have them over here? I don't think we have the gameplay map. I want to show you. I want to show you the boards over here. But basically, you're going to be uh, navigating on this giant hex grid as you try to destroy trash cans, take out the rats, destroy the generals, or alternatively having the generals take you, the players, down. So again, one versus many asymmetric experience. That's going to be the Great Rat Wars coming to Kickstarter May 9th. We have Raising Robots, another May 9th campaign that's coming to you from Navu Games. This has the most adorable artwork you have ever seen. I think I have I think I have a review up of this game already. I should, if I don't already. Raising Robots, do I not have a review up? Now I'm trying to th figure out if I have my review that went up or not. I don't remember. Either way, Raising Robots, I'll have review coverage if I didn't, if I don't already have it up, I will have review coverage for you. This is a tableau building game, kind of in the same vein as a game like, you know, Wingspan or Earth, but with cute, adorable robots that is going to give you a, a system of progression as you try to figure out how to manage your resources and your economy, as you try to play cards into activating these different phases of play. So I uh, think, you know, Wingspan combined with Face for the Galaxy, as you try to figure out how to build out these adorable robots, and the artwork on these cards is absolutely adorable, beyond top-notch, like the theme carries this for me 100%. But this is Raising Robots from Navu Games. Gives you about a 60 to 90 minute tableau building experience with uh, asymmetric player powers, with tons of robots, and with a lot of replayability as you figure out which cards and which combinations of cards you're going to go through as you trade in your resources and get as many points as possible. Then we have Ains Trespass Odyssey second printing coming to you May 16th. This is going to be the relaunch campaign to Ains Trespass Odyssey, which has gotten a lot of hype, a lot of buzz, and will be showing up back on Kickstarter. I do not imagine you will be getting this game for the same price you got the original campaign for. That was one that was like consistently kept escalating the price over time finally delivered a lot of people are liking and enjoying this puzzle of a, of a giant kingdom death monster meets seventh continent experience this is and trespass odyssey second printing it will not be cheap i assume but it will be a game that many people are very much enjoying check out the uh, feedback and reviews both positive and, ne and negative making sure it is or is not a game for you as and trespass odyssey second printing coming may 16th we have a hot nick over here which is again another may 16th campaign this is a kind of a semi-cooperative game set in a dark future where you are going to be teaming up two players are going to be teaming up to control the these giant mechs taking down the various giant demons who are trying to rule the world. That's going to be a hot nick launching May, I hope I'm saying that correctly, launching May 16th. We have Dead Cells, the roguelike board game. I think this is currently yep, it's currently still scheduled for May 16th, coming to you from Scorpion Mask, based on the video game Dead Cells. Don't know a lot about the actual gameplay here, but very intrigued with 15,000 people following the campaign. This is likely going to be a big one. I have no, I have to even play the video game. I mean, there's a lot of hype and buzz about this. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on it. I'm sure I'll have more, more, more coverage of the campaign as it goes through, but that will be Dead Cells, the roguelike board game from Scorpion Mask launching May 16th. 
We have Disrupt, a game in which you have to become the new unicorn startup in Silicon Valley. An asymmetric economic game of worker placement, car driven mechanics. This is going to be Disrupt, coming to you from Triple Meeple. Uh, 800 followers currently, and looks like a midweight worker placement game. Midweight, midweight economic engine game, uh, 16th of May launching as well. We have Monster Hunter World Iceborne the board game, another May 16th, May, May 18th, not May 16th, the May 18th campaign, Monster Hunter World. 9,000 people following the campaign so, so far. This is the uh, follow up to Monster Hunter World, the original. Uh, the, well, this is a standalone game called Iceborne that's going to be giving you the same core mechanics you got to know in Monster Hunter World, but with new elements brought in. I will have coverage and first impressions and gameplay of this. In fact, I think the gameplay is going to be the official gameplay over on Steam Forge Games channel, so make sure to check that out. And then, of course, I'll have first impressions of diving into the experience with myself, with Devin, with Meg. This brings you all the things you liked about Monster Hunter World, and it gives you more of it. Now, it does it does mean there'll be frustrated people because you'll have your full Monster Hunter World, and you're like, why they have more of this over here? A reasonable question. I'm sure we'll talk about it. Ultimately, your original Monster Hunter World is still going to be just as good as it ever was. Iceborne just brings you more and changes and updates and things that you don't necessarily need. You absolutely do not need Iceborne, but if you do want Iceborne, there are reasons to dive into and get this game. This guy has small tweaks and improvements upon the Monster Hunter World formula. It is not 100% cross compatible although you can of course homebrew whatever it is it, you can easily mix and match it's just not officially supported for the sake of not having to go oh, crazy on balance that's going to be monster hunter world iceborne launching may 18th on kickstarter we have apex, Le apex legends the board game i believe this is also going to be i think this is may 17th actually apex legends the board game this is coming to you from glass cannon unplugged another one based on a video game we have a bunch of bunch of video games we have we have dead cells we have monster hunter world we have uh, apex legends i mean, may have had more i don't even remember at this point but overall apex legends is a board game coming to you from Glass Cannon Unplugged. 11,000 people following the campaign. Uh, this is going to be, again, based on the video game, it's going to have, I believe, they're going to have like ongoing packs and whatnot to keep players invested and interested in this. I, I've heard from a few people who played this one recently at Gamma that they enjoyed it. I have not had a chance to play it myself, so I can't speak to it, but it seems some people are definitely enjoying this one, and I'm very curious to see what the gameplay will be like. That is going to be Apex Legends, the board game, launching on May 17th, if I'm not mistaken. We have Evolution Another World. 2,500 people following it, coming from Crowd D Games. This is the newest version of Evolution. This is going to be Evolution Another World with a bit of a, a bit of a, I don't even know how to phrase it, a bit of a, um, oh my gosh, words escape me. A bit of a alien -ish, strange planet kind of vibe to the evolution system that you know. It's going to give you the same core idea of building up these creatures and giving them traits as they try to survive and take down other creatures while you try to gather ge gems from the shared pool while also trying to eat and attack others in the game, slowly either depleting what, they're, the, what they've been collecting and adding or alternatively just uh, you know being able to attack them in some way, take away a trait or hurt them in some way, shape or form. There's a lot of balancing in this game making sure you're building up the creatures, adding the traits you need. It's a very tough back and forth. I really enjoy this one as a two player experience. You can check it out. I'll have full coverage of the of the I'll have full coverage of the game coming close to the campaign. As a two player experience, there's a ton tense back and forth over here. As a three plus or more puzzle, it's a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more, you know, who's going to actually end up surviving. But this is Evolution Another World, fantastic art and a good version of the evolution system. Then coming to you from I believe May uh, May twenty third, we have Loam from Carver Revolution. Twenty three days to go, so yeah, May twenty third over here, five and one people following it. This is a bit of a puzzle played solo or competitively as you go through trying to go through some degree of set matching, building healthy soils. Don't know a ton about the gameplay. I'm simultaneously intrigued by some aspects of this while not fully pulled in by the art, but some of this got some adorable clay art. Either way, this is alone. We'll see more about it on May 23rd over on GameFound. Then we have Roos Instincts of the Den board game. 2400 people are following this campaign. This guy, whoever this is, has been doing a great job of sharing things over on Facebook. I've seen constant updates, constant screenshots. The game looks amazing. I don't know a lot about the game, but unique design, worker placement, uh, you know, uh, exploration, resource and dice management, a lot of key fun little buzzwords. But the game does look great. Uh, again, the creator has been very active in Facebook communities, which I think is a very solid move. It's engaging in the community and giving people a taste of a game that looks cool. How does it actually play? Don't know, but I do know that I've been interested in this game since seeing pictures of it throughout Facebook, uh, you know, for the past few months. We have Into the God's Grave, coming to you, I believe, May 23rd as well, coming from Lucky Duck Games. This is a car-driven cooperative adventure game. This is another app-based system from Lucky Ducks. Lucky Duck Games in general have done a ton of app-based app, develop, app -based development games, uh, from anything from, from Chronicles of Crime to Destinies to 
to uh, Divinus, and Into the God's Grave seems like it's going to be their newest adventure into that world, into that system. Uh, very intrigued by this one, 5,000 people f currently following the campaign, and of course we'll see how things develop as we get closer to the May 23rd campaign. We have Asteroid Dice, the giant throw and collide squishy dice game. Another May 23rd campaign, I believe. Asteroid Dice has, you know, chaotic cosmic games, squishy dice that are both a game in and of themselves, as well as, of course, can be used in any system you want, uh, you know, for RPGs, D&D, &D, whatever it is. So I don't know a ton about this one. I'm intrigued, but also not entirely sold in this one. Looks like it's half gimmick, half board game. That's going to be Asteroid Dice uh, launching May 23rd. We have Galaxy Postman, a space adventure game. Now these last three over here are just generic May dates. I don't know if they will or won't be launching, but this is Galaxy Postman, 576 followers. Uh, your first shift as a Galaxy Postman, deliver your package on time and watch out for aliens who want a ride home. Hopefully launching in May, possibly launching in May. And then we have Thunder Rules, the Garage Expansion. This is going to be the successor. This is an expansion to Thunder Rules. Uh, previously a uh, Richard Lanius design, previously launched by Mr. B Games. Uh, delivered already and this is the expansion to the game I don't know what it's gonna be adding to it but more stuff for this racing experience and then lastly we have solar Titans Solar Titans, again, I believe launching in May. 331 followers of this one. This one looks like a fun little puzzle. I don't have a firm grasp on the gameplay yet, but manage your crew, engage in deep, deep tactical combat, a unique uh, combo of tableau and deck building. Solar Titans, overall, this one looks good. It looks pretty good as far as the actual puzzle going on, but I'll have more information as we get closer to the campaign. Which means now it's time for picks of the month. This is where I basically just pick the things I'm most looking forward to from the campaigns. And for me so far, I think, where are we? Sky Tier Horde is definitely one that I am strongly looking forward forward to. I very much enjoy the original game. I do agree that the original box needs to be a drop better, and I'm interested in more combinations, more factions for this experience, so Sky Tier Horde is going to be one for me, and the other one is going to be, where is it? Raising Robots is another one that I'm very compelled by. Overall enjoy that with that one. Uh, the gameplay is very solid, but then the art elevates it to the next level, and then where's the last one I want to cover? Oh my gosh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne is 100% that one that I'm interested in, but that's not necessarily what it was. I think it was actually, I think it was Monster Hunter World Iceborne was the last one. That is one that I very much enjoy diving into this one. Again, it gives you Monster Hunter World with, to me, the things they've changed are just solid changes to the gameplay. Again, your original Monster Hunter World still stands good on its own, but I very much enjoyed playing through this one. They have some cool things going on. I have an interview with Steam Forge Games over my channel. You can check it out. But they have anything from the... Uh, the clutch claw in the game to my personal favorite is going to be, well, a few things. that tweaks to the gameplay, fun things like that. But my personal favorite is going to be the idea that you have two different monsters fighting each other while trying to engage with them. I really enjoyed what that brought to the gameplay experience, both from a cinematic experience, but also from a manipulation of the battlefield as you try to ensure that these two monsters attack each other rather than stepping on you. But you also might now have two monsters stepping on you, so it's a fun, chaotic mix to add to the experience. And with that, as a regular reminder to go ahead and subscribe to Shelf Clutter, who's going to have up-to-date information on all these campaigns and until next time i'm alex radcliffe from board game co i hope you enjoyed this video and as always i hope you have a good one